Hello there, I'm a modern mobile crane from Liebherr. I'm very strong and pretty intelligent, but I suppose a lot of others can claim the same. I am an all-terrain telescopic crane, which means I can get to just about any location where there are heavy loads to move. And this is my boss. He has a fairly easy life because he has me. Well, actually, sometimes his life is not that easy. And that's why we've made this film. And these are my relatives. Telescopic cranes. Lattice boom cranes. And crawler cranes. A really strong bunch. My designer thinks I shouldn't show off so much. He can't hear me right now. He works too hard, the poor bloke. He always says, we stand out due to our performance and precision. <laughs> what does he think we do all day? But there's one thing that gives me and my pals a real headache. Actually, it's invisible and light as a feather, but it has a massive effect. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Exactly. We're talking about the wind. Or rather, about too much wind. Of course, I have nothing against a light breeze. But unfortunately, wind can get really nasty and even really dangerous. Actually, it should be banned. But that could be a little difficult. If you got rid of the wind, there'd be no wind power. And then we'd have nothing to do. And on the subject of wind power, we can see it in action here. But if you've got a rotor star on the hook, and then you get a powerful gust out of nowhere, you soon stop laughing. My boss and I know, of course, what the current wind speed is. We have our anemometer at the top of the crane. But these damn gusts are completely unpredictable. My clever Lick-On control does what it can, but it can't see into the future. Not yet, anyway. But I'm sure they'll come up with something at some stage. Actually, my colleagues and I are real outdoorsmen. We're always out in the countryside, with bushes and trees, or sometimes up in the mountains, in villages, in towns, and in industrial parks. The wind is slowed down in different ways. The roughness of the environment, that's what the experts call it. Just next door at the airfield, the wind might be blowing a real gale at the same time. Not surprisingly, the whole place is flat, and especially at the coast. But who am I telling? The roughness of a landscape can be classified. The graphic shows roughness classes 0 to 4. The Met Office always refers to Roughness Class 2. That's worth remembering. Recently, a colleague of mine had a job to do in town. A wind speed of 6 metres per second was forecast. But what did he find down there in long rows of houses? 9 metres per second. He told me that it was due to the tunnel effect. But he always knows better. Then again, our large 11,200, the one with the 100 metre boom, says that higher up, the wind is always stronger. Up there, the landscape no longer has much of a role to play. And my cousin, the crawler crane, he's always busy at altitudes of 100 to 200 metres. Uh, uh, lifting heights, I mean. He says that he has to be very careful. If you get an unexpected gust, things can get very tricky. It's a good job that my boss can always calculate the maximum permissible wind speed. So, let's sum up again and you can make notes. Our problem relates to gusts. The roughness of the landscape plays a role. And the higher you go, the stronger the wind blows. OK? And why is this important? That's what we want to explain today. The important thing is to calculate the maximum permissible wind speed for your crane job without clairvoyance. At this point, a little theory won't go amiss. What I really dislike is wind from the front. 
Although it takes the strain off my boom and the luffing ram, the load stays the same, of course. My load moment limiting system then calculates much too low a value for the load, shown here in exaggerated form. This means that it cuts out too late, and there's a risk that I'll suffer an overload. If the wind comes from the rear, it places an added load on my boom system. The load indicator is too high. The load moment limiting system then cuts out earlier than the load capacity table suggests. Not exactly an ideal situation either. And if the load actually starts to swing, and in gusting wind that can happen very fast, the boom will start to swing as well. Then, the load on the crane will swing into its limit range and the load moment limiting system cuts in and out constantly. Again, not great. Unfortunately, the wind often blows how it wants and when it wants. So, sometimes it comes across and pushes the load forcefully to the side. This is the very worst scenario because my load moment limiting system is unable to detect the wind from the side. If the load provides a large surface area, things can get very hazardous indeed because my boom cannot withstand excessive lateral forces. And that makes this extremely dangerous. Another thing, twice the wind speed means four times the wind load. I have a great deal of respect for this wind. It's generally absolutely harmless at the start, but then it's gone, gone with the wind. We, that is cranes, can only fall over. And that applies to all cranes, whether they're telescopic or lattice boom versions. And regardless of who built them, just to make that clear, I can easily live without that. For us telescopic cranes, and this also includes our heavy-footed relatives, the crawler cranes, the wind is the absolute unknown quantity. OK, OK, sorry boys, of course you're stronger, but you're just as afraid of the wind as I am. OK, we know the weight of a load, but what surface area does it offer to the wind? We can illuminate a twisting load with a searchlight. The shadow changes its size as it twists. And it's very similar with the wind. Every load has a maximum projected surface area known as AP and that is the value that we need. The projected area of a load must always be supplied with it. If it is not supplied, we phone the manufacturer or the supplier, or at least my boss or his job planner does. You'll see exactly why in a moment. But first of all, action! As a genuinely mobile crane, I have a major weakness for speed. And this is just great! This is the director. Would you stay on topic? Our viewers don't have a lot of time. OK. Hey, what's that? The CW value, in other words, the wind resistance factor, plays a major role in fast cars and in crane jobs. I'm sure you've seen one of these before. Here are a few examples from the motor industry. My God, those were the days. That's when people still had time. Ford Model T, VW Beetle, Audi 100. Today, a wind resistance factor of approximately 0.3 is standard. And now, I suppose you want to know my CW value. Sorry, I'm going to have to look that up. Hmm. Now, where do I find it? Hmm. Ha! Strange. I've no idea what it is. Anyway, it's the CW value of the load that's important. Here are some geometries and the corresponding CW values. Heavy loads are rarely based on design specifications. The drag coefficient, the CW value of a body, denotes how large the obstacle is for the air. 
you get the CW value, I'll bet you've guessed already, from the manufacturer of the load. Just a reminder of the other details the manufacturer has to provide. The precise weight of the load, the maximum projected area, and the CW value of the load. Those are the three things the crane driver needs. Actually, to tell the truth, these values are sometimes incorrectly stated, and that causes problems for me and my boss. So, before every job, my boss looks at the medium range weather forecast and the expected wind speeds. There are various sources for this, including www.windfinder.com. But remember, it's the gusts that are crucial. These values refer to 10 metres above ground level. And, as we already know, the higher you go, the stronger the wind blows. You can also call the local Met Office. Ich bräuchte die Winddaten für Ingen bei Ulm. Ja, für den ganzen Tag. Und morgen bitte auch. And then, of course, I have my anemometer. On the display, I show the wind speed measured at the top of the crane by the wind sensor. Very important. Never use these values as the sole basis for lifting a load. There are too many different factors involved. And that brings us right to the heart of the matter. How can a crane driver know the wind speed in which a crane job can be completed? And when it should not be attempted? And it's at this point we need a little bit of mathematics. Don't worry, we can do this. We use the projected surface AP and the CW value to calculate the surface area exposed to the wind, AW. AW equals AP times CW. This figure indicates how much surface area is exposed to the wind, taking into account the CW value of the load. The load capacity tables are based on standard EN 13000. This assumes a projected surface of 1.0 square meters per tonne of load with a CW value of 1.2. Using the formula, this produces a surface exposed to the wind, AW, of 1.2 square meters per tonne of load. The maximum wind speed from the load capacity table VMAX tab only applies to a reference value of 1.2 square meters per tonne of load. If the load has a larger surface exposed to the wind, the maximum wind speed Vmax must be recalculated. There are two methods of doing this. Method one. Let's take a rotor as an example. Weight, 65 tons. CW value, 1.4. Projected surface, 200 square meters. Surface area exposed to the wind. AW equals AP times CW. AW equals 200 square meters times 1.4, giving a value of 280 square meters. 280 square meters divided by 65 tons gives us a reference value of 4.31 square meters per ton of load. The value of 4.31 is much higher than the reference value of 1.2 square meters of surface area exposed to the wind per ton of load. The maximum wind speed from the load capacity table of 11.1 .1 meters per second is therefore not applicable. Now, we can choose the appropriate wind force diagram. In this case, 11.1 .1 meters per second. In this diagram, we can now draw the weight of the load and then the surface area exposed to the wind. The point of intersection of the two lines is the maximum permitted wind speed. In this case, 5.9 meters per second. Method two. The maximum wind speed can be calculated a little more quickly using this formula. Vmax equals Vmax tab 
times the square root of 1.2 square meters per ton times mh divided by aw. Where mh is the mass of the hoist load, aw is the surface area exposed to the wind, calculated using ap and the cw value, and vmax tab is the maximum wind speed from the load capacity table. So let's use the same example of the rotor. Weight 65 tons. CW value 1.4. Projected surface 200 square meters. The surface area exposed to the wind is therefore 280 square meters. Maximum wind speed from the load capacity table 11.1 meters per second. We'll start with the figures under the square root. 1.2 times 65 divided by 280, then the square root, times 11.1, giving us the maximum wind speed of 5.86 meters per second. Our calculations are correct. We get the same value as when we use the wind diagram. Important, this value is not simply transferred to the Likon. This means that there will be no warning if this wind speed is exceeded. The crane driver must keep the calculated value in his head, or even better, visualize it and compare it with the measurements. If we then compare the calculated and the maximum wind speed from the load capacity table, in other words, Vmax and Vmax tab, the lower of the two values must always be used as the maximum value. So, for large loads, the maximum wind speed must be calculated individually. The three values of weight, surface area exposed to the wind, and the CW value supplied with the load are essential for this purpose. The calculation, either using the table or a calculator, is then fairly simple. These methods also apply to lattice boom cranes. And that certainly means that you're on the safe side. In some load cases, I can certainly withstand more wind, but all that has to be calculated precisely. The statics experts at Liebherr can do all this, and if you want, you're welcome to call them. Anyway, my boss has understood it all. <laughs> but he's got me, of course, hasn't he? All that's left to do for me is to thank the people at Liebherr. They've also produced a great booklet on this subject and of course they also offer detailed training courses. Thank you for watching and I hope that I've managed to make you just a little bit wiser so that you're not left in this situation. The answer my friend is blowing in the wind. The answer... Oh, that poor bloke's still going. Well, I suppose even the strongest wind calms down at some stage and don't forget a crane driver needs three things. Weight, projected surface, and CW value. Good luck. See you soon.